so Max, do you really think that, okay, so Jan initiated a major shift in computer science with the deep learning and the, 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 net, the neural networks that, the artificial neural networks that really do model human neural networks to some extent, or did, did they? Okay, but hold on, I'm gonna get next. Um, do you think that that's gonna be the path to AI, deep learning, that we're gonna teach machines how to correct their behavior, analyze big data sets, you know, weight sums in a certain way so that they actually learn? Do you think that that's gonna be the path? The path? A path? I think it's gonna be one key part of the puzzle, is what I think. I think that the... Um, so in that, the, in that I, you scenario, know, you don't program, right? You just sort of give it some data. I think uh, we're a little bit too obsessed about how our own brain works when we envision the first ever superhuman artificial intelligence. Um, but that just that kind of shows a lack of imagination. You know, if you think about, suppose we were having this, this uh, Psycon minus 200, you know, 200 years ago, and we were thinking, I wonder what the first flying machine is gonna be like. Is it gonna have feath black feathers or white feathers, you know? Uh, when the Wright brothers actually, for the first time, build a built a flying machine, it wasn't the mechanical bird, because it turned out there was a much easier way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna be the same with intelligence. Why did nature build flying machines with feathers first? Because for nature, it wasn't enough that the thing would fly. It also had to be self-assembling and self-repairing and so on for Darwinian evolution to do it, right? And look at our brains. Why do we have so many different kinds of neurons? Why are our brains so complicated? Even though Jan LeCun's neural networks have only one kind of neurons, maybe, with a relo activation function, right? It's because this has to be self-assembling, self-repairing, and all sorts of other things that an engineer doesn't care about. My guess is that there are significantly simpler and easier ways to get there than by just trying to figure out exactly how our brain works. And I think obviously the ideas what we have heard about with deep learning will be a key part of it. I also think though that there will probably be some other aspects of, of what we sometimes call GoFi, good old fashioned artificial intelligence, <laughs> you know, more logic based where you have to build a model of the world. It'll probably help complement the mm. learning so that these systems become, yeah, get sort of get the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. I think that's the question of biological inspiration. Like, how much inspiration can you get from biology? I'm going to do an exercise here. Um, mm -hmm. Who here has, uh, has heard of a guy called Clément Adair, or, you know, English pronunciation, Clément Adair? <laughs> okay. One, One person. person. Are you French? <laughs> Are you an aviation buff? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So, this is Guy. Oh, okay, another, another person here. Are you French? He's okay. an aviation buff. <laughs> Generally, when I ask this question and, and someone raises their hand, they, they have some connection with France. Okay. <laughs> this guy uh, built an airplane in the shape of a bat in the uh, late 19th century, steam-powered. Mm -hmm. It was the first, uh, the first heavier-than-air thing to take off on its own power. It was completely uncontrollable. The guy had no interest in stability and <laughs> any of that stuff. And when you look at uh, uh, pictures uh, or reproductions of this, this airplane, it really looks like a bat. It's just a bat with propellers. It's not doesn't flap the, the wings, but it's got propellers. And um, the reason you never heard about him, even though he was the first guy to take to take off on his own power, is that first of all, he didn't believe in open source. You know, he kind of kept everything secret a little bit. Um, but mainly because there was no follow-up on this because he was too hypnotized by the biological inspiration and didn't think about understanding the underlying principles. So what the Wright brothers did that he didn't do uh, was uh, you know, actually studying uh, flight as an engineering discipline, you know, building uh, wind tunnels and you know, studying stability and then building models and, and gliders and stuff like that, right? Um, and, and, and so they succeeded because they kind of understood, at least intuitively, what the underlying principles were, whereas this guy came out there didn't. Um, in fact, he has one legacy, which is that the name he gave to, the, to his airplane is Avion, and that became the, the, the name, the word for airplane in French and in Spanish and Portuguese. So it, this idea that, okay, let's not model an artificial intelligence after the one example we really have of advanced you know, human, I mean, 
encourage, I mean, let's not get overly self-congratulatory, but, um, but if we don't and we don't program it, how will we know when we have it? I mean, if we're not literally writing a code that's intelligent and we're not modeling it after a biological system, we're letting it learn and develop its own intelligence in a way. It's kind of like letting it evolve. Well, how will we recognize it when it happens? Is it possible that it will be so different that we won't even see it? We won't well, even understand it, or at least not at first. Well, there's many ways in which it can be different. I mean, we do, it's, it is useful to get inspiration from, mm -hmm. from biology, but you don't want to copy the details that you don't understand. You want to figure out what the underlying principles are, mm -hmm. right? Like building airplanes, you want to understand aerodynamics, and that explains how our, uh, airplane and birds fly. Mm -hmm. Is there an equivalent of aerodynamics for intelligence? You know, some theory of intelligence that would explain how humans and animals and, and computers can, can become intelligent. So we do get inspiration from biology, so neural networks. So do you think that there is a fundamental kind of principle of intelligence that will be the same amongst all so intelligent entities? I don't know if there is, but I'm working on this assumption. Okay. <laughs> because, because it would be Famous really cool Lazarus. if that were, <laughs> and it would, you know, um, it, you know, it means the problem is solvable, right? Uh, whereas uh, if, uh, like my dear colleague Gary Marcus believes, the brain is a collection of hacks, he calls this a kludge. Uh, mm -hmm. He has a little book with that title, actually. Mm -hmm. um, then we're screwed. We can't, there's no way we can build intelligent machines because you know, we have to basically uh, uh, kind of retrace evolution, and that's going to be very difficult from an engineering point of view. So I hope there is an underlying principle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working on this assumption. Max, but do you think that there is? That there's a unifying principle of intelligence that will be the same, will have a commonality? Actually. Let's talk first about what we mean by intelligence so we can really answer this question honestly, but, uh, maybe by making an analogy to, to the mental performance of intelligence to physical performance in sports. I, if I told you that uh, <coughs> athletic ability can be measured by a single number called the uh, athletic quotient, the uh, AQ, and whichever athlete in the Olympics has the highest AQ is going to win all the sports from the swimming to the pole vault you would just boo me out of the room, wouldn't you, right? And of course, it's exactly the same with intelligence. It, it's how good you are at performing various tasks. You can have very na narrow intelligence, like the chess playing computer who couldn't even beat me at tic-tac-toe, or you can have very broad intelligence, like a human child who can learn almost everything, which is sort of the holy grail for us to build in, in machine form. Uh, my guess, so, so, so first of all, what this means is we're defining intelligence not as something mysterious, but in terms of performance, what the thing can actually do. So of course we're gonna know when we have it. If you can just tell it you know, to, t to teach your next lecture and write your next book, and it does, you'll feel, oh, it's pretty smart. Um, <laughs> it's, it's now you're and second, no, so you asked me this question about whether I think our brain is a hack, and if so, if I would all get all depressed. Even if it turns out that our brain is a bit of a kludge, I still don't think we're screwed because I think just because our brain is a kludge, maybe, maybe just like a bird is also a little bit of a kludge. An airplane is very simple. So maybe if we study the foundations carefully, like Jan was advocating, we can discover much simpler ways also of building intelligence, which is not so kludgy. Well, let's let's compare.